Intel has gone through a bit of a rough patch recently. One so bad, maybe we should be calling it a rough mile. Degradation found in their 13th and 14th gen processors was bad enough. Then there were the mass layoffs and belt tightening. Then they hoped that the Core Ultra 200 series, codenamed Arrow Lake, would make a splash. But unfortunately, despite some interesting changes and impressive efficiency gains, it was more of a belly flop. So today they made two major announcements. Their CEO is out. <laughs> like what? And also, their ARC desktop GPUs are finally getting a follow-up. To say then that they need ARC Battle Mage to be a win would be a gross understatement. But with the announcements made today, I am cautiously optimistic. If the numbers are to be believed, it is looking great for budget gamers. But if this is yet another failure, I think 2024 could go down as the single worst year in Intel's existence. So I thought it was only fitting then that this segue, this one that I'm dragging out right now, should be remembered as the worst ridge segue. Ridge. Black Friday might have just passed ever on this channel. Editor cut just passed by, but Ridge is keeping the discounts coming. Get your holiday gifts in and save up to 40% at ridge.com slash LTT. Here, please. Thank you. There's a lot of ground for us to cover, but in a nutshell, you'll find nuts. And in this video, you'll find mostly a recap of the Battle Mage announcement. Intel has confirmed that we are getting two new graphics cards, the B580 in mid-December and the B570 about a month later in mid-January. More on the architectural and software improvements in a bit, but these cards are 12 gig and 10 gig cards respectively, meaning that you should be very comfortable gaming at 1080p, and Intel is even going as far as to say that the B580 could be the heart of a 1440p gaming machine, and all of this for less money than Nvidia's RTX 4060, which only has eight gigs of VRAM and is marketed as a 1080p card. The pricing, <laughs> I gotta say, it looks great. But you don't have to look far for the motivation for this hyper-aggressive pricing. Arc Alchemist has barely even registered on the Steam hardware survey, and it's been out for two long years. So what has changed then to give this new card a chance to compete? Well, kind of everything. We first met Battle Mage alongside Intel's Lunar Lake mobile platform earlier this year. The big focus? Efficiency. Their previous XE-based graphics cards required massive amounts of power and large silicon dyes for meager performance. And their changes focus on improving core utilization, enabling smarter work distribution between those cores, and reducing software overhead. They've made vast improvements to pretty much every part of the pipeline. Improved vertex fetching, mesh shading, out-of-order sampling, blending throughput, and many more terms that, quite honestly, I don't expect the average gamer to care about. But what you might care about is ray tracing. Each ray tracing unit is larger and can now handle 1.5x or two times more calculations, further improving the already decent RT performance of XE graphics. And thanks to the B580's 12 gigs of GDDR6, not 6X, sadly, you are less likely to find your ray tracing performance bottlenecked with Intel claiming a 64% frame rate improvement over the RTX 4060 in one cherry-picked example where the B580 still runs below 60 frames per second, making that argument pretty questionable. Ah, but, but, AI? XE matrix extensions, which can be described kind of as the tensor cores of Intel GPUs, are specifically designed to maximize performance with the matrix math that is typical of AI workloads. And they got some nice juice here. XMX was already pretty impressive, albeit under-supported on their server hardware. But here we get upgrades to support more data types and we get improved clock speeds, which could be a huge boon for people who are interested in running local models on the cheap. Intel is so confident in this that they're providing a front end for generating your own AI images. Maybe they could use it to generate one like this. <laughs> I kid, I kid. All of these improvements and features are coming on a card that will draw just 8.5% more power than its namesake predecessor. It's still a lot more power than the RTX 4060, but is an impressive improvement in performance per watt nonetheless. But we always gotta keep in mind, these results are cherry-picked samples from Intel, so as always, I would encourage you guys to wait for our full review. Speaking of sampling, super sampling. Launching alongside this new discrete card is XCSS2, which is Team Blue's answer to DLSS3 plus frame gen. 
It packs a suite of AI enhanced features. Super sampling to improve performance by rendering the game at a lower resolution, then using AI to upscale it to your display, combined with AI powered frame generation that will add fake frames based on both in engine vector information and optical flow information. To deal with the added latency of trying to add fake frames, a latency reduction solution that is plainly tiled XE low latency, Intel claims we can expect a 45% latency reduction over native rendering. Furthermore, they're bringing XCSS support to Vulkan and DirectX 11, allowing developers to more easily implement the tech in existing and future games. Sounds promising, but naturally, all of the caveats around the image quality of DLSS and FSR still apply here. Until we see it. Maybe it's perfect, but I doubt it. But what about the price? I keep saying it's good, but I haven't said what it is. Well, you're gonna have to wait for our review to see where this card actually lands when it comes to 1080p and 1440p performance. But what we know now is that $249, I am, well, I'm extremely excited. Both of the incumbent players have treated the budget gaming segment like it isn't even worth their time and attention. But Intel looks dead set to bring back the, like, the capable $500 gaming box. And this is the best outcome that I could have hoped for back when they threw their hat in the ring. Their LTT Hat Pro, lttstore.com. Of course, we should be taking all of this with a grain of salt so big you could choke on it. But what Intel is claiming is 26% average uplift in raster performance per dollar over the RX 7600 at 1440p Ultra, which is across 47 games on a card that is $20 cheaper at MSRP. And then if we look at ray tracing, which is one of Team Red's biggest weak points when compared to Nvidia, Team Blue comes out 37 points ahead of that same card. There's less data points here with only nine games tested, but that is still very, hopefully, impressive. And at 299, the RTX 4060 is allegedly getting slaughtered by Intel's new B580. That Nvidia card costs about 20% more while delivering, allegedly, 24% less raster performance per dollar and 20% less ray tracing performance per dollar at 1440p. So it looks like while the CPU team at Intel was busy trying to do something great, the GPU division may have been busy succeeding, allegedly. I can't wait to start testing these cards and finding out where they actually land, both against the competition and against themselves. This card should crush it in just about every way. Yes, the memory bus width is substantially lower, but we've got a lot more VRAM and much higher clock speeds to help make 1440p gaming possible. They're also launching alongside years of groundwork that was laid by the driver team that took the original ARC cards from the stuttery mess at launch to basically playable across the majority of PC games. Now, when we were discussing the leaks and the Battle Mage launch internally, we all agreed that this thing needed to be no more than $250, and at minimum, it had to be on par with an RTX 4060 for performance for it to even matter. Anything more expensive or less performant, and they would have shot themselves in the foot moments before the race even began. Well, Intel, Battle Mage, and XC2 graphics, they might be a little late to the party, but if these slides are to be believed, they were just busy stopping for more beverages and guests so they could keep the party going. Their timing, also kind of good in my opinion. It could be months before we see something like an RTX 5060 from Nvidia and an RX 8600 or whatever's next from AMD. Now there's absolutely no telling how much better they might be, but even a 20% improvement at the same price could still keep Intel on top of that lowest rung on the ladder. So the way that I see it, if we have to sacrifice Pat Gelsinger to summon our Dark Magician, well then, that's just the heart of the cards. Now I summon Pot of Greed, which lets me give you three segues to our sponsor. Squarespace. Make sure that your business is ready for the holiday season with a quick and easy to set up website. Squarespace's platform is designed to streamline the website building process while still offering endless possibilities for customization. Their blueprint system lays the foundation with carefully curated layouts and styling options. Then you're free to go buck wild and customize to your heart's content with their code-free drag and drop fluid engine editor. If you're ever stuck on what to do next, their design intelligence AI tools are there to lend you a hand. Just throw in a prompt and it will tap into two decades of industry leading design experience to help bring your vision to life. And if you're selling a product or service, their payment solution, aptly named 
Squarespace Payments, lets you set up in minutes, then provides you with an intuitive dashboard to help keep track of transactions. They support most major credit cards, Apple Pay, PayPal, and so much more. So don't wait. Go to squarespace.com LTT to get 10% off your first purchase and set your business up to make a splash heading into 2025. Oh God, it's 2025. Thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, go check out our Intel Arc live stream from back when they first launched. It um, has improved a lot.